Hello, good morning. Thank you for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and go ahead and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in to this um, broadcast for the very first time, type a number one in the comments. Good morning, good morning. My name is Keisha Johnson. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all for tuning in. Great morning, Ricky. Good morning, good morning. Let's go ahead. You all know what to do. Let's go ahead and share out the broadcast. And as you are tuning in, go ahead and type in the comments, God, I appreciate you. Let's let him know that we appreciate him on this morning. Great morning, everybody. Great morning. So good to see you all. Happy Monday. I'm just going to go ahead and share this into um, my community groups and then uh, we will get going. So as you're tuning in, don't forget to share out the broadcast. Um, this is a great way to evangelize um, just by sharing the word of God. And I'm going to go ahead and do that as well and share this into my um, community groups. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Doretha. Good morning, Sharon. Great morning, everybody. Let's see here. Um, let me go ahead and all right. I think we are all good here all right awesome good morning yes it is a fine time to evangelize and you just do that by sharing um this video and i'm super excited we have another one year bible that we are going to be giving away and i believe that all of you have received your one year bibles there is one person that's waiting and you should be receiving your one year bible in a couple of days you know what to do you just share the video go ahead and tag at least one or two people in the comments so you will share the video type in hashtag shared and then go ahead and tag a person if you have a one-year bible that's okay you can still do it and what we have been doing is sending the one-year bible to the person that you are tagging so this is a great way to invite someone especially as we are coming up in the new year it's a great time to kind of just start and get in the habit of reading through the one-year bible if they're not already and we'll be doing this again i believe what for our third year is that'll be our third year um in 2021 so go ahead share the video type in hashtag shared and tag at least one person and I always wait until the evening to come back to choose someone so that way we give everyone a chance to come back and catch the replay and everything so please help me to share this out we want as many people as we can listening to the one year bible with us um, I'm always excited when we have new people and they message me like I am new to your page I'm so excited about what you all are doing when I ordered my one year bible so it's always fun um, so go ahead and share and then um, share in the comments, what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? I went to bed somewhere in the 11 o'clock hour, a little bit later than I like to. And I got up at 3.15. Somebody go ahead and type in the comments, God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. You went to bed at 11 too, so did I. It's a great day to be alive. And I'm so thankful and so grateful um, that God has allowed us to see another day. Um, so go ahead and share where you are tuning in from if you don't mind. Go ahead and type in the comments and let us know where you're tuning in from. And what else? If you have not grabbed your anointing oil, you will want to do that and make sure that you have anointed your hands and go ahead and type in the comments, my hands are blessed. Go ahead and type that in, my hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything I touch multiplies, amen. Everything I touch turns to gold. Go ahead and type that in the comments. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick they will be healed and they will recover in Jesus name and somebody go ahead and type in amen all right so let me go ahead and get everything going here hang on just a moment um all right so Facebook is all right so I don't know I don't know um it could be because I don't know 
have two people message me that said that they can't find me yet. So as you all begin sharing out the videos, um, it'll show up on somebody's timeline. So go ahead and continue to share the video and they will find us. All right. Um, I'm not going to stress out about them not being able to find us. I don't know um, if fate, I don't know what Facebook is doing. So we're not going to do that this morning. All right. So let's go ahead and jump in um, with our opening verse for today. Um, no, we're not going to jump in. Can you all? All right. Can some, I don't see any comments moving. Are you all here? Can someone say yes or give me a thumbs up? And I'm going to turn off my messenger afterwards so I don't have people. Okay. Are you all? Okay. All right. I see the comments moving. All right. So we're good. So let's just go ahead and thank the Father. Go ahead and type in the comments at least one thing that you're thankful for. I see the comments moving now. Here we are. I'm like, not today. <laughs> not today. So let's go ahead and type in the comments at least one thing that you are thankful for. And then we will dive in. Um, as I always say, or usually like to ask, what if you woke up today with only, thank you all. All right. I see the comments moving again. Again, what if you woke up today with only what you thank God for yesterday? What would you have? Okay, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are we still here? So let's go ahead and type in the comments what you're thankful for. So Father, we honor you. Thank you all. Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are God. You are good in every way there is to be good. And we say Thank you. Go ahead and type that in the comments. We say thank you. We thank you for being such a kind father. You are a loving father and you are far better to us than we deserve. And we say thank you. Father, we thank you for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you've protected us from. Somebody go ahead and type in the comments. Thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you for being our deliverer. We thank you for Father, for being all that we need. We thank you. That's right, Ricky. Ricky says, we thank you for great grace. Amen. We thank you, Father. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you, Father, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you, Father, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We thank you. You all go ahead and continue to type in the comments what you're thankful for. And for those of you that are just tuning in, thank you so much. And please don't forget, we're doing another Bible giveaway today. If you all can help me share the broadcast, we want as many people as we can listening to the One Year Bible with us. So if you can go ahead and share the broadcast, type in hashtag shared and then go ahead and tag at least one person and if anyone wants to sew a bible some of you have kind of messaged me that's how we've been able to give so many away you message me and if you want to sew a bible I'm not asking you to do that but if the lord puts it on your heart to do it message me and um just message me. All right, so go ahead and uh, type in the comments our opening verse for today, 2 Chronicles 14, 11. 2 Chronicles 14, 11. Um, someone typed that in the comments, and it says, Then Asa cried out to the Lord his God, O oh Lord, no one but you can help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O oh Lord, our God, for we trust in you alone. It is in your name that we have come against this uh, this vast horde. O oh Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere men prevail against you. Somebody go ahead and type in a comment. God delivers the righteous from trouble. <laughs> God delivers the righteous from trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and read our devotional for today. And then I have a few uh, things here that I would like to share with you all. God delivers the righteous from trouble. God delivers the righteous from trouble. All right. Who will avenge and, offend and, and defend you when you are wronged? Who will protect you from danger? My arms are not too short to reach down and deliver you from out of control situations that come to shatter your faith. Somebody type in the comments, his arm is not too short. His arm is not too short. Know that trouble will not last always. Know that trouble will not last always. My ears are in tune to your heart's cry. 
I will shield you with my mighty hand and guard you from the terror of the enemy. Put your faith in me. And listen, I have a question for you all. Where have you put your faith? In whom or in what have you put your faith? This is such a great reminder on today. Put your faith in me, says the Father, and know that I have everything under control. It may seem as if all hell is breaking loose in your life right now, but God wants to remind you that he is in control. He is still on the throne. All right. He is still on the throne. You may lose sight of who I am in your life, but you won't lose sight of my presence. The enemy desires to overwhelm you. The enemy desires to overwhelm you by rushing into your life like a flood. But I, says the Father, lift up a standard by declaring my word against him. I have given you authority to bring the enemies of God under submission. And let me read that again. The enemy desires to overwhelm you by rushing into your life like a flood. But I lift up a standard by declaring my word against him. I have given you the authority to bring the enemies of God under submission. Every, let, listen, can let the church say amen. Somebody go ahead and type amen in the comments. And so listen, when I tell you <laughs> that the enemy desires to cut this to just listen all right how where what do okay i feel like i'm supposed to be doing one thing but i feel like god is going in into a totally different direction the enemy desires to overwhelm you by rushing into your life like a flood but somebody put type in uh but god in the comments somebody type in but god somebody type in but god so i have had some things going on right over the last few weeks and when i tell you the enemy came in like a flood <laughs> he came in like a flood and when i tell you he wore me out he wore me out all right i'm just gonna be real honest here wore me out so keisha it's been a week you've been hosting watch parties and replays where have you been what have you been doing over here trying to get myself together <laughs> over here trying to get myself together um and so i had to this is listen little rabbit trail and then we're gonna go to what i have here in my notes that's right type in but god little rabbit trail here and so when i realized hold on wait a minute when i say wore me out i mean wore me out all right wore me out y'all type in but god and so when there are things that are happening, right, and things that are going on in your life, sometimes, you know, it, you have to stop, right? Sometimes you have to stop and you have to take a look and ask, why do certain things keep happening? And then you start to realize patterns and certain things happen like around the same time. And you have to stop and ask yourself, right? And some of it, yeah, it's, 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 it's warfare. And that comes along, you know, with what it is that God, that it comes up. That's, that's, that it just, that's just part of it, right? But sometimes you realize it's a little bit deeper than that. And while I understand, I know it's too early on a Monday morning to kind of be trying to go all deep like that, but it is what it is. The spiritual world is real, right? And so I had to stop and pause and remind myself, hold on, wait a minute. This battle right here is spiritual, right? This battle right here is spiritual. And, um, how can I say this? The spiritual world is real, right? Demons are real. All of that is real. And so I had to stop and pause and take a look and say, what's really going on here, right? What, what's really happening here? So when I tell you all, I have put in, been putting in the work, and I need you all to share this because this is going to help somebody. When I say I have been putting in the work, I have been putting in the work because I realized this was more than just a, a, just a little spiritual attack tag right it was it was much more than that so a lot of times there are some things that just takes deliverance right the drama lord how can, did, 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 listen it this was more this this was deep this was deep this was deep are y'all hearing me this was deep and so i had to stop and i'm trying to get my words right i had to stop and put in the work sometimes there it, it you know this yes it's real and see and a lot of times um 
I'm, 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 I'm trying to, because <laughs> it's only 4.30 in the morning. I feel like this needs to be a whole entire live in itself, but maybe not 4.30 in the morning. So with that being said, I have been putting in the work. Sometimes we have to stop and we have to look and we have to ask ourselves, right? What is it that has been bringing on all of this demonic activity? It is what it is. And I know some of you may be thinking, whoa, it is what it is. And so I had to stop and ask, where was the door open and why is this going on, right? Where has the door been open? So when I tell you I've been putting in the work, I've been working, right? I had to stop. The, the, and, the, and the, Listen, it, doors are open <laughs> either due to sin, generational sin, or generational curses, right? Doors, the doors have been open either. The doors can be open either because of sin, generational sin, or generational curses. So I sat back and said, you know what, Holy Spirit, I'm going to need you to help me to figure out where is this open door because we need to shut it and seal it with the blood of Jesus so the things that are going on and the things that are happening can stop. And so when you have that sin, generational sin or generational cursing, curses, you know, this, 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 they, listen, I'm telling y'all, I need y'all to hear me. These demons will continue to travel on through the bloodline, right? But I, it takes somebody, maybe like Akeisha Johnson, that one person that your bloodline has been waiting on to say, it stops here, right? It takes that one person. So I think I put up a post and said, you are who your family has been waiting for. So because of this, I realized you, Keisha Johnson, you are who your family has been waiting for. And so I had to stop and go back. And when I say I had to go way back, I had to go way back. And there were a lot of open doors. So when I tell you <clears throat> I have been putting in the work, and a lot of times when things happen, we first cry, woe is me, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. How can somebody be so wicked? You know, and, but I think, God that what happened happened because if it had not I would not have thought oh wait a minute hold on this goes way deeper than this uh, listen are y'all following me because I'm trying not to go way out there on the rabbit trail but I'm also trying to help somebody so a lot of times people don't want to say especially when you're in the role of leadership you know you know, people don't want to say, I need deliverance, right? But it's okay to say, I'm anointed and I need deliverance. I've been called to do th things by God, but I need deliverance. So there has been a lot of deliverance work that has been going on behind the scenes because I said, enough is enough. It stops here, right? Is this helping anybody? Are y'all following me? <laughs> Are y'all following me? Because I'm telling y'all, this is real and this is not a joke. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to stop here and, and, and jump into what I have here. And I'm going I'm gonna to come back and do a live um, one of these mornings, uh, later in the morning, probably like around 10 or 11. But one day this week, I'm going to come back and do a live because uh, we need to talk about this. All right. Because this is definitely something that needs to be talk, talked about. Is that right? Spoken about, talked about. Yeah, y'all know what I'm saying. We, we, we need to talk about it, but I have figured it out. And if I didn't know before, I know now. I, me, Keisha Johnson, I am who my family, I am who my bloodline has been waiting for. And for some of you, I need you to type in the comments, I am who my bloodline has been waiting for. I am who my bloodline has been waiting for. All right, and so we're going to come back. So God delivers the righteous from trouble. God delivers the righteous from trouble. All right. Someone type in Psalm 3419. So when I tell you all, listen, 2021 is right around the corner. 2021 is right around the corner. And I say this every single time around this year, which made me think it's always the same kind of things that's going on in my life right around this time of the year. I need you all to know that there is nothing magical about the new year, right? Nothing magical about the new year. We're all like, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. But you all know we still have three months left, right? 2020 is not over yet. But there are so many people that have thrown 2020 in the trash. And like, I'm done with 2020. I'm waiting for 2021 to get here. Although all hell has been breaking loose behind the scenes over here in this home and in my life. 
I am still excited about 2020. I am not throwing 2020 in the trash yet. But when I tell you, you have to put in the work. If you don't want some of these things to carry over and, and, and go on into 2021, you have to put in the work. Is this helping somebody? You have to put in the work. You have to put in the work. And listen, even I am behind the scenes putting in the work. All right. Listen, let me let me do a little rabbit trail. Psalm 34, 19. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Psalm 34, 19. Someone type that in the comments. Psalm 15, Psalm 50, 15. Someone type this in the comments. Psalm 50, 15. And call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honor me. Another scripture reference I want to leave you all with, Psalm 119, 170. And some of you all have some work to do. And some of you all have some work to do. So that was for somebody. I just, I just, that's just what I heard in my spirit. Some of you have some work to do. And I need you to say, I will put in my work. I will put in the work. Psalm 119, 170. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. Someone type that in for me. Psalm 119, 170. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. All right. So it's one thing, right? When the enemy messes with you, right? But it's another thing when he messes with your family. It's another thing when he messes with your children, right? And a lot of times if he can't get to you, he will come after those that are closest to you. Same thing, you know, same thing, right? He knows that he can't mess with God. He can't get to God. So what? who does he come after? The, the ones that, that, that the, the, the one thing that means the most to him, right? And that's his children, that's us. And so what I'm saying this morning is by putting in the work, We must deal with our demons so our children don't have to. Do y'all are y'all hearing me? Are y'all are y'all hearing me? We need to deal with it so our children don't have to. So I'm telling you this morning, you have work to do. Put in the work. Put in the work. All right. So am I going to be able to stick to what I have here? <laughs> I feel like so that was Psalm 34 19, Psalm 50 15, Psalm 119 170. All right, so I need you all to say, I need you all to type this in God still delivers the righteous out of trouble. And I wrote a note here as we face trouble in this life, we must take hold of God um, and His promise to deliver His children from trouble. And I just gave you all three scripture references, three scripture references. All right, three scripture references. I'm telling you all, put in the work. Go ahead and put in the work. Put in the work. Put in the work. All right, I want to read a quote from Tim Keller. Um, he said, God often uses our troubles to rescue us from our own flaws and make us great. Let me read that again by Tim Keller. God often uses our troubles to rescue us from our own flaws and make us great. Somebody just go ahead and type in the comments for me. Hashtag ask me how I know. Sometimes, oftentimes God uses our own troubles to rescue us from our own flaws and make us great. So a lot of times when things happen, what do we first do, right? We want to try to pray things away. God, take it away. Why is this happening to me? But we have that. What are, what are the two questions I say we have to learn to ask? You know, who is it that you're trying to be to me in this situation? And what is it that you want me to learn from this situation? Who is it that you're trying to be to me in this situation? And what is it that you are trying, uh, want me to learn in this situation? So my question for you today is, how is God rescuing you? I want you to think about that. That's a question for you to sit after the broadcast and journal. How is God rescuing you? How is God rescuing you? And so I want you to be reminded on today that we serve a faithful God. Oh, don't forget, grab your water if you haven't, if you don't have your water. We serve a faithful God. We serve a God who hears 
and we serve a God who heals. Good morning to those of you that are just tuning in. Welcome. Let me just share again really quickly. We are doing another Bible giveaway. All you have to do is share the video, type in hashtag shared and go ahead and tag a person that you want to join us and either you or them will get the one year Bible if you are chosen. All right. So again, Psalm 50, Psalm 50, 15, and I want to um, read Psalm 50, 15 again, and then we're going to talk about the five things that this verse, this scripture verse reveals about God's character. All right. So Psalm 50, 15 says, and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honor me. So there are five things that this reveals about God's character. All right. And number one, it shows that he cares about our lives. It shows that he cares about our lives. It shows that he cares about our lives. All right. And we can bring our worries to him because he cares. All right. Number two, Psalm 50, 15 reveals another thing about God's character. It shows how willing the Lord is to help us. He is ready and willing to help us. We just need to call on him. We just need to call on him. All right. And I want you all to read. Um, I almost forgot this. Read the story of the leper in Luke 5, 12 and 13. Someone type that in for me. Luke chapter 5 verses 12 and 13. Luke chapter 5 verses 12 and 13. I want you all to read that on your own time. All right. So the third thing is shows that God knows that we need simple commands. <laughs> Keyword simple, right? It shows that God knows that we need simple commands. The fourth thing that it reveals about his character is it shows that God gives a uh, God gives sure and certain promises. He gives sure and certain promises. It says, I will deliver you, and not I might, not I'm gonna think about it, not I'm gonna see. I will deliver you. So he gives sure and certain promises promises right and numbers someone type this in for me numbers 23 19 what does it tell us god is not a man that he should lie god is not a man that he should lie so if he said it it's so if he said it we can believe it he gives sure and certain promises that we can believe because he's not a man that he should lie the last thing that um psalm 50 15 reveals about god's character is god delivers for his glory God delivers for his glory. Hold the line. God delivers for his glory. God delivers for his glory, right? He receives praise and honor when he delivers. He receives praise and honor when he delivers. All right, so those are the five things that I pulled out of five, um, Psalm 50, 15 that um, reveals the five things that it reveals about God's character. And so... What I want you all to do, even in, even if you're in the middle of your trouble, even if, even if, go ahead and begin to thank and praise God now. Go ahead and begin to thank and praise God now in the midst of your trouble and watch it shift things. It's all about perspective, right? And that's what I had to begin to do when things kept coming in. Now, listen, I'm, when I tell y'all the enemy came in like a flood, he came in like a flood. And I literally felt like I was in a boxing ring just getting, I was like, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on? And when I tell you all, he wore me out and I had to think and I had to say, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute wait a minute. And I just began to thank God in advance <laughs> for delivering me from all of this. So begin to thank him, begin to glorify him, begin to praise him now in the middle, in the midst of your trouble and watch it shift things. Watch things change. Watch things change. It's all about perspective. All right. And so listen, when I tell you, pay attention to the things that are going on in your life pay attention to the things that are happening because when i tell you all right the enemy has no new tricks he has no new tricks he just uses different people different circumstances and so when you pay attention and you realize wait a minute certain things just keep happening same situation different person right and you have to stop and you have to look and you have to think about it. And, you know, and so, again, as I shared in the beginning of the broadcast, and for those of you that may just be jumping on, you have to catch the replay. The spiritual world is real. All right. It's real. It, it is real. And so last week, I just took some me time. I had to recover from everything that's been going on. I had to recover. So there are times where you, you don't quit, but you have to stop. 
It's, it's, slow down is what I'm saying. Don't quit, but sometimes you just have to slow down. And self-care is so important. Y'all hear me? Self-care is so important. And so while I've been kind of trying to recover, listen, when I tell you all, while I have been trying to recover, I have also been putting in some work. And like, like I said earlier, I am, and I know this without a shadow of the doubt, I am exactly who my bloodline has been waiting for. And I said, you know what, God, no matter how hard this gets, no matter how messy it gets, I will put in the work. I will do the necessary work because the demons, yes, demons are real that have been traveling through my, just traveling right on through my bloodline. We had to put a stop to it. We had to put a stop to it. And so it took me sitting and, and, and renouncing, right? Repenting for things that, you know, on my behalf, on behalf of my mother, father, you know, all my ancestors, closing doors, sealing doors with the blood of Jesus, been putting in the work because I said, this it, it stops here. It stops here. So I'm telling you all. So I'm going to do another live about that. So I'm going to, um, that's it for this morning. Um, but that's a whole broadcast in itself. I don't know if I'm going to do it in the mornings for waking early for his glory or just do a separate broadcast. But listen, the first thing I said when all this started happening, I said, oh, a testimony is coming out of this. <laughs> I said, a testimony is coming out of this, and I cannot wait to share because the devil thought he was doing something, right? He thought he was stopping something, but a testimony is coming out of this, all right? A testimony, and what is that verse? Is it Genesis 50, 20? Somebody look up, look that up for me where it says what, uh, the, the, what, the evil eat what the devil meant for bad, God meant for good, or whatever. You know, y'all know what I'm saying. I believe it's somewhere in Genesis 50, 20. So uh, what he, what, what, what he, yeah. God turned it all around. And listen, that's another thing. Um, the word tells us somewhere in Romans, I can't remember right now, that God works all things together for our good, right? All things. And all things means all things. It doesn't matter what it is. So um, I'm not going to lie. And if, at first I was mad. I was like, hold on, wait a minute, God. You know how we can do all that I'm doing for you, right? We, who, listen, we tell God, after all that I'm doing for you, you allow this to happen to me? This and then the next thing happened and the next thing happened, right? I found myself really angry. I was angry with God. And listen, I'm just being honest. I was angry and I had to stop and say, hold on, little missy. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. This is not how we're going to respond to this situation. You know how we have to talk to ourselves, right? Talk to our flesh. This is thank you. I knew it was somewhere in Romans. It's just I couldn't think with all these verses um, I've been throwing out this morning. Um, so he does. He works all things together for our good. And so I had to remind myself he works all things. This right here, even it, as horrible, as wicked, as, as awful as this may seem, he's, he's, it, God works all things together for our good. And so I had to stop complaining. And what do I always say when we complain? It's like a slap in the face to God, right? So I had to stop complaining. I had to stop complaining. I had to stop worrying. And I chose to worship and said, I chose to worship instead. So listen, that's it for today. Our um, declaration, I think that was a few rabbit trails, right? I decree and declare I am blessed because I trust in the Lord. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Someone type this in the comments for me. I decree and declare I am blessed because I trust in the Lord. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Um, listen, did I help anybody this morning? Because I feel like this broadcast was all over the place this morning with all my little rabbit trails. Did I help anybody this morning? Even if I just help one person, <laughs> just one person, if it's just type, put a little raise your hand, the little emoji where you raise your hand if I helped you this morning. I pray that I said something to help you this morning. But listen, I still have a lot of work to do. I'm not finished yet. Um, but I, And I'm like, Lord, I feel like I've been putting in the work for four years now. So this has been a very long journey. You know, this has been a very long journey. But what do I always say? I'm a finisher, right? I'm a finisher. I finish with my start, what I start. And I'm like, God, you can trust me. You can trust me 
to finish this. I won't quit. It <laughs> doesn't matter. Listen, the heat was turned up <laughs> the last couple of weeks. The fire was turned up. But I still said, I will not quit. When I tell y'all it got hot. <laughs> Listen, I'm here to tell you, the fire was turned up. And there were a few times where I was like, I don't know. If all of this comes with this, I, don't, I didn't ask for this. And I literally was like, God, I didn't ask for this. I, I, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. But anyway, God knows he can trust me. I, I'm not going anywhere. I won't quit. The work of the Lord will still continue. The work of the Lord will still continue. All right, so that's it, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, the open doors are real. And so what we have to do is ask the Holy Spirit to show us, you know, where the door was open. And for me, and I know for my family and our bloodline, a lot of it was due to some of it gross sin. And some of it, not so much, you know, just generational curses, generational sins. Um, and so when things like this happen, when things happen, right, the first thing people do, people can be really judgmental. And listen, I am people. We're all people, right? We can be really judgmental. The first thing they think, ooh, what does she do? You know, what does she do? And it may not necessarily be what that person did, you know, again. We're talking about generational sins, you know, generational curses, you know, doors that have been open a long time ago that we have to go back and, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, and figure out where was the door open. And so I learned some things over this last week, you know, taking the time to do that. I have learned some things. I had a lot of repenting, a lot of renouncing. Um, and I remember sitting and saying, why do I have to do all this work because of what they did? You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It needs to stop here. Right. So that's it. All right. If you are new to the broadcast and you made it this far, thank you and welcome. We are about to move into um, the second half of the broadcast and listen to the one year Bible together. Um, if you have not shared the video now, it's a great time to share as we are about to go into um, listening to the one year Bible. Um, if you all don't mind, go ahead and share your takeaway. What is one thing that stood out to you or something that you will do differently because of what you heard today and oh here we go I'm going to pull up the one year audio bible on my phone so you all go ahead and grab your water um, grab your vitamins yes burrita I'm so excited for those of you that have grabbed your bite not grab receive your vitamins over the last week and I have um, quite a few orders to get out today um, a, a few of you messaged me about your orders and yesterday I did not respond to any of my messages. It was just, I just didn't. So I will respond today. All right. So here we go. Yes, we must all do the work. Our reading of the Old Testament. Okay, here we go. If you can hear this type in a number two. 54, beginning at verse one. We'll go through chapter 57. Verse 14. Is the volume okay? And we'll see the future regathering and restoring of Israel. It's a picture of the uh, wonderful Type changes of number two of the God makes okay. when trials and sufferings end. And by the way, yes, they do come to an end. The barren woman gives birth to so many children that the family tent must be enlarged. The widow loses her shame and is wed once again, this time to Jehovah himself. The storm is over. And God gives peace. Now is a great time to and share. And the covenant sign of the rainbow is in the sky. The uh, times of chastening or suffering may seem spiritually barren to you, but God uses them to give birth to blessings. Okay. Good. Times of sorrow and reproach, of course, are painful, but they can lead to greater joys. Storms can be frightening, but they polish God's jewels and bring Him glory. Amen. It is painful to go through the furnace. But God uses the experience to make you a stronger and better tool. Listen. My friend, the best is yet to come. Listen. And then as we move on into chapter 55, we see again the prophet I went through the, the fire. God makes in the lives of those who turn from their sins and trust mm. the Savior. From substitutes to reality, the lost sinner is bankrupt because he spends all he has for what cannot satisfy. When you hear God's word and obey... 
Well, you start to enjoy the water of life and the bread of life found only in Jesus Christ. And you turn from death to life. Jesus is the fulfillment of the covenant God made with David. When you trust him, you share in his life and his victories. All that Jesus is and has, you are and you have. You are fully inheriting the kingdom. You're moved from guilt to pardon. When the sinner repents and turns to Christ by faith, well, God shows mercy and grants pardon. But don't delay. You're turned from fear to certainty. God's ways are beyond man's comprehension. But yes. you can be sure he is accomplishing his purposes in his times. Like the rain and snow that seems to be wasted, God accomplishes by his word, his will on the earth. And then you're turned from wilderness to paradise. Sin turns the garden into a desert. But grace transforms the desert. Someone respond and type in the um, website Abundant address, please. Pardon and joy are available to all who accept God's gracious invitation. All right, uh, with that, let's begin our reading today in the Old Testament. Please reply to Mavis Lewis for September me. September 28. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1, through chapter 57, verse 14. Sing, O childless woman, break forth into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem, even though you never gave birth to a child. For the woman who could bear no children now has more than all the other women, says the Lord. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will take over other nations and live in their cities. Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. The shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood will be remembered no more. For your creator will be your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. He is your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you back from your grief, as though you were a young wife Abandoned by her husband, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you. But with great compassion, I will take you back. In a moment of anger, I turned my face away for a little while. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Just as I swore in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth, and destroy its life. So now I swear that I will never again pour out my anger on you. For the mountains may depart and the hills disappear, but even then I will remain loyal to you. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O oh, storm-battered city, troubled and desolate, I will rebuild you on a foundation of sapphires and make the walls of your houses from precious jewels. I will make your towers of sparkling rubies and your gates and walls of shining gems. I will teach all your citizens and their prosperity will be great. You will live under a government that is just and fair. Your enemies will stay far away. You will live in peace. Terror will not come near. If any nation comes to fight you, it will not be because I sent them to punish you. Your enemies will always be defeated because I am on your side. Amen. I have created the blacksmith who fans the coals beneath the forge and makes the weapons of destruction. And I have created the armies that destroy. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. And everyone who tells lies no in weapon. court will be brought to justice. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink, even if you have no money. Come, take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Amen. Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen. And I will tell you where to get food that is good for the soul. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen, for the life of your soul is at stake. 
I am ready to make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the mercies and unfailing love that I promised to David. He displayed my power by being my witness and the leader among the nations. You also will command the nations, and they will come running to obey, because I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you righteous. Mm -hmm. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the people turn from their wicked deeds. Let them banish from their minds the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will absolutely pardon. My thoughts are completely different from yours, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Amen. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It mm -hmm. will accomplish all I want it to. Yes, Lord. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Where once there were thorns, cypress trees will grow. Where briars grew, myrtles will sprout up. This miracle will bring great honor to the Lord's name. It will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. Be just and fair to all, says the Lord. Do what is right and good. I am coming soon to rescue you. Blessed are those who are careful to do this. Blessed are those who honor my Sabbath days of rest by refusing to work. And blessed are those who keep themselves from doing wrong. And my blessings are for Gentiles too, when they commit themselves to the Lord. Do not let them think that I consider them second-class citizens. And my blessings are also for the eunuchs. They are as much mine as anyone else. For I say this to the eunuchs, who keep my Sabbath days holy, who choose to do what pleases me and commit their lives to me. I will give them in my house within my walls a memorial and a name far greater than the honor they would have received by having sons and daughters. For the time I have given them is an everlasting one. It will never disappear. I will also bless the Gentiles who commit themselves to the Lord and serve him and love his name, who worship him and do not desecrate the Sabbath day of rest and who have accepted his covenant. I will bring them also to my holy mountain of Jerusalem and will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. For the Sovereign Lord, who brings back the outcasts of Israel, says, I will bring others, too, besides my people Israel. Come, wild animals of the field. Come, wild animals of the forest. Come and devour my people. For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, his shepherds, are blind to every danger. <coughs> they are like silent watchdogs <coughs> that give no warning. When danger comes, they love to lie around, sleeping and dreaming. And they are as greedy as dogs, never satisfied. They are stupid shepherds, all following their own path, all of them intent on personal gain. Come, they say, we will get some wine and have a party. Let's all get drunk. Let this go on and on, and tomorrow will be even better. The righteous pass away. The godly often die before their time, and no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For the godly who die will rest in peace. But you, come here, you witches' children, 
you offspring of adulterers and prostitutes? Whom do you mock, making faces and sticking out your tongues? You children of sinners and liars, you worship your idols with great passion beneath every green tree. You slaughter your children as human sacrifices down in the valleys under overhanging rocks. Your gods are the smooth stones in the valleys. You worship them with drink offerings and grain offerings. They, not I, are your inheritance. Does all this make me happy? You have committed adultery on the mountaintops by worshiping idols there. And so you have been unfaithful to me. Behind closed doors, you have set up your idols and worshiped them instead of me. This is adultery, for you are loving these idols instead of loving me. You have climbed right into bed with these detestable gods. You have given olive oil and perfume to Molech as your gift. You have traveled far, even into the world of the dead, to find new gods to love. You grew weary in your search, but you never gave up. You strengthened yourself and went on. Why were you more afraid of them than of me? How is it that you don't even remember me or think about me? Is it because I have not corrected you that you have no fear of me? Mm. Now I will expose your so-called good deeds that you consider so righteous. None of them will benefit or save you. Let's see if your idols can do anything for you Come on. when you cry to them for help. They are so helpless that a breath of wind can knock them down. Come on. But whoever trusts in me will possess the land and inherit my holy mountain. I will say, rebuild the road, clear away the rocks and stones, so my people can return from captivity. Now type in amen. We're moving into the New Testament. Can you all please share this for me if you haven't shared yet? September 28th. Book of Ephesians. As we turn our attention now to the New Testament, our reading today will be in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 24. We'll see that spirit-filled Christians will manifest Christ's likeness in the home, on the job, and on the battlefield of life. Listen, the bottom line here is if we don't learn to obey at home, we're not likely to be uh, obedient on the job or in the army of the Lord. In the same way, if we've not learned to take orders, we will not be too successful at giving orders, mm -hmm. either as parents or as employers. The danger in the home is parents who are authoritarian, but do not exercise loving spiritual authority. The danger on the job is the employee who is a, a clock watcher and uh, does not obey from the heart, and the boss who forgets that he is second in command and must one day give an account to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the danger on the battlefield is that we do not take the enemy seriously and so fail to put on all of the armor. That. By faith, mm -hmm. you put on the armor through prayer, which must be done at the beginning of every day. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you have your armor on right now? Listen, never underestimate the strategy and strength of the devil. Come on. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the New Testament. September 28th, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 24. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first of the Ten Commandments that ends with a promise, and this is the promise. If you honor your father and mother, you will live a long life full of blessing. And now a word to you fathers. Don't make your children angry by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction approved by the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely, as you would serve Christ. Work hard, but not just to please your masters when they're watching. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. Work with enthusiasm, as though you were working for the Lord rather mm -hmm. than for people. Remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. And in the same way, you masters, 
must treat your slaves right. Don't threaten them. Remember, you both have the same master in heaven, and he has no favorites. Except me. I'm his A favorite. Final word. Be strong with the Lord's mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies and tricks of the devil. For we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood. Come on. But against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. Use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil so that after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared in every battle you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by satan come on put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of god pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the holy spirit stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. And pray for me, too. Ask God to give me the right words as I boldly explain God's secret plan that the good news is for the Gentiles, too. I'm in chains now for preaching this message as God's ambassador. But pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Mm. While in chains. Tychicus, a much-loved brother and faithful helper in the Lord's work, will tell you all about how I am getting along. I am sending him to you for just this purpose. He will let you know how we are, and he will encourage you. May God give you peace, dear brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God's grace be upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Yes, y'all all type in I'm his favorite. <laughs> Psalm 70, verses 1 through 5. You know, David was in a hurry when he wrote this brief psalm because God was not in a hurry. Three times he cried, make haste. And he ended with, do not delay. Like Peter sinking into the water. He didn't have time, you know, for a long prayer. All he could uh, cry was, Lord, save me. Why does God delay answering your prayers? Surely he can see your desperate situation. He promises to give grace to help in time of need. Amen. That can be translated grace for well-timed help. Listen, your father's timing is never wrong. When God waits, he may have a better gift for you than what you're asking him for now. His delays are neither denials nor defeats. So put your that. times in his hands and wait on the Lord. Psalm 70, Amen. verses 1 through 5. For the choir director, a psalm of David, to bring us to the Lord's remembrance. Please, God, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame. For they said, Aha, we've got him now. But may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Please hurry to my aid, O God. You are my helper and my savior. O Lord, do, do not, not delay. delay. Anybody ever pray to prayer like this? Just short Proverbs to the 24, point. Verse eight. <laughs> a person who plans evil will get a reputation as a troublemaker. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, so if you want to share your takeaways from today's reading, wasn't this so perfect? Such a timely word for today. And don't forget, um, we are doing another Bible giveaway. If you don't need the one-year Bible, it's okay. Just go ahead and share it anyway and tag a friend that you want to join us on this journey. Listen, I'm telling you all this. Y'all already know how I feel about reading through this one-year Bible. Um, and my goal is to get as many people as we can just listening in, even if they're not on in the morning, at least catching the replay. So when you all tag people, they do come back and catch the replay because I see them type hashtag replay. So go ahead and hit share, um, come back and type in hashtag share and um, tag at least one person. And later on this evening, I will come back to do the selection for the Bible giveaway. And a lot of times you may say, I have a one-year Bible, go ahead and send it to the person. And we do that as well. So I'm excited. Uh, I don't I lost count of how many one year Bibles we've given out so far because a lot of you behind the scenes have been sewing Bibles as well. So we've given away a lot of one year Bibles and I'm excited. Um, about that. So thank you all for those of you that said, hey, I want to sew a Bible. And again, I'm not asking you all to do that. But of course, if God puts it on your heart and you want to sew a Bible into someone, by all means, message me and let me know. All right. So that is it. I have my little trampoline thing right here ready for me to put it down on the floor. And my Fitbit, I need to get my Fitbit so I can start jumping away to get some of my steps in. And then I have a live this morning to work out at six o'clock with a few ladies. So um, don't forget, drink your water. I finished mine. Uh, take your vitamins and um, go for a walk today. And I'm excited a few of you ordered your little mini indoor trampoline things. Uh, what are they called? I forgot what they call them. They're little mini trampolines. So that's it. So you all have an amazing day. Um, is that everything? I think that's everything. You're so grateful. Listen, amen. So good to see you, Viola Carter. So good to see you. All right, so I'm going to let you all go so I can get some things done. And I have some messages to respond to um, that I didn't get to this weekend. So I love you all and have an awesome day. Bye, y'all. <laughs>